Hello, I'm here with Organic Elegance and I'm introducing Stephanie Angstadt. She is the owner and the CEO of Valley Milk House. Thank you. <laughs> and I have the first question for her today. It is, compared to other handmade organic cheeses, what makes yours special? Um, that's a good question. I think what makes our cheeses special is that is that handmade aspect. It's really that we spend a lot of time with each cheese putting our personal stamp on it. Um, so from the point that the um, milk enters the creamery and starts getting warmed up, um, we're really gently stirring the milk. Um, we're you know, doing all of the stirring and cutting essentially by hand, which is unique because a lot of cheese making now is mechanized. Um, and what that means is that you get a really nice um, soft curd and some really nice textures in the cheese that I think are really hard to find anywhere else. Hmm. Interesting. I enjoy coming here on the farm and just seeing it too. I guess you can come here as a customer. You can just come here and get it? Yep, yep. We okay. have a farm store here and um, it's open year round pretty much. We just have an honor system and it works okay. really well. We. Uh, get a good crowd of people from, I would say, the greater Philadelphia region, Lehigh Valley region. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm from Berks County, and this area is really nice to come to and visit. Just some nice general day to go shopping. Yeah. Alrighty. The next question. Were you always a supporter of organic milk and dairy products? Yeah. I would say that, um, I would say that I was. I mean, there's a really big difference between um, organic versus conventional milk and beyond that there's a really big difference between grass-fed and organic milk um, you know a lot of times a dairy could be certified organic um, but they're feeding their cows a lot of grain and corn silage and things like that that actually aren't that good for them but as long as the feed is organic um, you know they get the organic certification it's not always necessarily the sign of super healthy cows so for me, what's more important than the word organic is the fact that the cows are grass-fed. Um, and the two dairies that I work with for the milk are, um, I searched far and wide to try to find them. Um, and when I did, I was greatly rewarded because the quality, I think, is some of the best in the region. And oh, wow, okay. what these dairies do is in the summer, they're rotating their cows every seven or eight hours cows are getting a fresh paddock of grasses and legumes and alfalfas and, and things like that in the in the field and um, it really optimizes their nutrition hmm. um, and even in the winter they don't get grain they get you know dry grassy hay or alfalfa hay and um, that is you know high in protein and yeah. it's really good for them so you know cows are ruminants they're supposed to be um, eating grass all the time, right, and breaking it down in their four stomachs. So I think the key uh, for good animal health is to really be providing them the opportunity to be grazing as much as possible. Yeah, and a nice environment, just a nice relaxed outdoor environment. Yeah. yeah. Better. I've been, uh, I interviewed uh, the Spring Creek Farms and I, um, and it was really nice when I visited, and I can I know what you're talking about, where they rotate them. I was there about for eight hours, mm -hmm. and they just did the whole process, and I just washed everything, and it was it was nice. So I know where this this one farm where the cheese comes from. Mm -hmm. So it was really cool. Yeah. The next one I have is <coughs> how many different styles of cheese can you make? Uh, okay. Do you mean um, how many styles of cheese? kind of can be made in the world or you mean in our creamery? Um, I remember with your your creamer you have two specific styles so how many within that range that you make? Um, well in our creamery we make um, five different cheeses plus um, butter. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> so we have six products um, and they all kind of fall within the French European style um, sort of genre. I really like those old world cheeses and so when I started the creamery that's what I set out to make. Um, so we make, yeah, a range. I mean there's um, a fresh cheese, 
Um, there are two uh, mold ripened cheeses, um, which is similar to a brie style. Um, we make a blue and then uh, we make a, a washed rind cheese, which is a cheese that um, is a wheel that we wash with cider and it um, helps develop some funky flavors. Uh, hmm. So it, it, that's probably a few too many styles than really um, we should be making because it's really nice to focus in on just a few and get really good at yeah. them. But they all sell so well across the board. I can't seem to let any of them go right now. So it's it's been fun just working on developing those recipes. Hmm. What makes the older the style different from your cheese that you can kind of get like at stores or even compared to other local um, cheeses that are made? What's the difference yeah. in the style? Well, you know, I think in this area, people um, in Berks County ha have been used to seeing more um, like block styles of cheeses, like your oh, Colby okay. and your Jack and, so it's and like a rectangular? American slices. Right, exactly. Kind of like block vacuum sealed cheeses, um, which are awesome for grilled cheese and they definitely have their, yeah. their purpose, of course. Um, and I'm never a snob about these things because, you know, there's a place for string cheese in the world, too. Um, but I think what was really missing in this region was taking high quality milk and turning it into a, a true table cheese, something that is a wedge or a wheel of something that you put out on a table and you nibble with crackers and wine and really talk about, um, which is, you know, so European, right? I mean, cheese finds a place onto the dinner table for every meal almost. So I was really inspired by that. I grew up with a Belgian mother and okay. I just, uh, I, I liked the idea of creating cheeses that are more like conversation pieces and really have character of their own. Hmm. They're stronger. They're definitely stronger. They're the funkier. Flavor. They're oozier. They're messy. They're... Are they, little, are they moisture compared? Well, you know, they're all different styles, but yeah, I mean, a lot of times, you know, you do get, like, the brie can get really oozy and runny this time of year, and some people love that, and some people think it's a total defect, you know, so hmm. uh, there's a, the time and a place for every cheese, but yeah, they, they tend to be very different from what a lot of people are used to around here, but I have to say, you know, this farm stand here in the Oli Valley has been um, one of my biggest sales outlets for retail and it's because I think people in the region do have an appetite for these styles and it's really encouraging to see. Hmm. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing the cheese room and everything getting to see, get to know it better. Yeah. I'm going to take a quick break and I'll be right back with you guys. Thank you. Alrighty. What is the main difference of European cheese making tradition compared to other kinds found from the local dairy farms. We did talk a little bit about that, kind of kind of rolled into this last question. Yeah. So I'm going to skip that one for right now. The next question is then, you make six styles of cheese. What is the main difference between French and Dutch style? The main difference between um, the different styles of cheese that we make have to do with basically manipulating variables um, that affect flavor. So uh, in the cheese making process, what makes a brie different from blue, different from a fresh goat cheese, different from a mozzarella, is a number of factors including um, the type of milk that you're using, right? Whether it's goat or cow's milk, whether it's skim or whole milk or added mm. cream, things like that. Um, and what we're doing in the cheese making process is basically um, acidifying the milk um, and the rate at which we acidify the milk is going to affect the flavor. It's called, a, it's called ripening basically, but we're ripening that milk to develop different flavors. Oh, okay. Um, and then we're also altering the temperature and salt, um, humidity, the size of the curd, the shape of the curd. We're altering the stirring time of the curd, um, all these different factors to get a wheel of cheese that is unique. And then um, we're taking that wheel of cheese and we are putting it into an aging environment that's going to affect the flavor even more. So you can see along the way there are 25 different steps in the cheese making process from milk to a wheel. Yeah and there are 25 different variables to manipulate along the way to try to get it to go in a different direction. Yeah. So that's the, 
That's the quickest answer, but we could spend hours and hours talking about how to make the different styles. But, you know, at the end of the day, people are interested in different um, texture and flavor profiles. Yeah. So, like, for example, the blue that we make is um, really uh, sharp and strong. It has a lot of earthy flavors. A little bit goes a long way. You just crumble it onto a salad and it adds so much flavor. Um, whereas the fresh uh, fromage blanc, the fresh cow's milk cheese, mm -hmm is um, very mild and it's just a little bit tart and people you know can kind of like slather it onto a sandwich you can use more of it because it's milder um, it melts really nicely so uh, yeah people I think are looking for different flavors and, and mm. textures you mentioned that the temperature changes at different times of the year is it because of the the location of your uh, facility is is easier um, to have the temperature affect it? Or what does it exactly do to the cheese? Um, well, the cheese does end up being different f different times of the year that for reasons that aren't necessarily related to temperature, but they're related to um, what's going on in the milk at that time. Oh, so this cows? is Yeah, so oh, that's okay. what's really fascinating about cheese is that in the summertime when the animals are out on grass, um, generally, you know, they're not pregnant, they've had their babies in the spring, and in the summer, you know, fat and protein tend to be pretty equal um, in the milk, which are the two main components of milk, are fat and protein. And as a cheesemaker, those are the components that we're trying to tease out of the milk and turn into, so you know, solid form. Oh, okay. Um, in, the, in the fall, um, is typically a time when the cows are weaning their calves, and so, contained in the milk is a higher dose of fat okay um, because uh, that is what's going to help those babies basically wean and then survive a winter yeah. um, so it makes sense biologically that the milk would be different that time of year um, in the spring it tends to be higher in protein like when a cow just gives birth um, there is higher protein in the milk to help the calf, the yeah, develop. the nourish, the development of the animal. So um, it's really interesting to see these changes. You know, I always say there's no better way to test what's going on in the milk than to turn it into cheese, <laughs> because it's a really sensitive process to all of those seasonal changes. And I think hmm. the most interesting aspect of being a cheesemaker is um, rather than trying to fight those changes to get a really consistent product, I try to just embrace them and make certain styles of cheese depending on what the milk is doing. That time of the year. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. <coughs> the next question I have for her is, what is the most popular kind of cheese that you sell? Well, I know I wish I could answer that because maybe I would quit everything else and just be making that cheese. It would be a lot easier to streamline my operation in that way. But um, I think they all sell pretty evenly across the board. Um, I mean, it depends on the market. Like in at the farmers markets, um, the fresh cheeses sell really well in the mm -hmm. summer. They're just really um, they're a little milder and they're very approachable and yeah. just like really good ingredient cheeses. Um, Whereas when I work with restaurants and chefs, they like to see some of the stronger aged cheeses because okay. um, they can put them on a cheese board with salami and it can really be like its own course um, or it can be turned into some complicated recipe that, you know, packs a big punch because of these strong flavors. Um, so it really depends on the customer, but I would say that mm. all the cheeses sell pretty well evenly across the board. <coughs> That's interesting, actually. Yeah. <coughs> the last question I have for today is, do you have any goals for this year for the creamery? Yes, I always have goals. I have monthly, weekly, daily goals. <laughs> I have definitely lots of yearly goals. Um, one of them is, um, I mean, a goal that I'm always chasing is um, trying to continue to improve the quality of the cheeses. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, even though I think the cheeses are good as they are now, there's still a lot of variability. Yeah. And um, I really want to continue to find ways to tweak the recipes and keep improving the quality because I think that they can 
well, they just have a long way to go, and it's really a lifelong conquest is to try to just keep constantly be improving your recipe. Oh, yeah. Um, I would really like to um, eliminate waste. I've been reading uh, about the lean farmer. Do you know about this concept? No, actually I don't. Okay, so there's, um, there's a farmer um, out in the Midwest named Ben Hartman, and he wrote a book called The Lean Farmer, and... Um, I think it applies to cheesemakers too, not just farmers, but the idea is to uh, try to eliminate waste as much as possible in your operation, Yeah. Um, which is something that I'm really thinking about because I want it to be sustainable and I want to be able to do this for the rest of my life, which means that not only do I have to keep improving the quality of the cheeses, but I have to improve the quality of, of the, the operation. The process, yeah. Exactly. Um, and that means finding ways to cut back on just um, you know, w wasting of, of resources and motion and energy and yeah. people and transport and things like that. I spend way too much time in my car, for example, just hauling around and making deliveries and things like that. So um, I'm looking to set up more of a shipping operation so that I can okay. ship cheese rather than drive it myself. Yeah. So that's an example, but just yeah, trying to streamline things and, and um, really start feeling efficient in the way that I run yeah. the production. A lot of people really like the fact that more businesses are looking towards more sustainable ways. And I think a lot of my fans are going to appreciate the fact you are working to do that. So, yeah, it's yeah, it's a lifelong goal. And, you know, I think a lot of times to be more efficient, you have to use a lot of resources. Like um, I would shave hours off my day if I had a commercial dishwasher, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's a big investment and uh, I don't necessarily have the space for it where I am now. So, yeah. um, there are certain, I think there are certain, um, investments that will be made in the short term and some in the long term, but the yeah. idea is that eventually, it, you know, it will be a, a leaner operation and, um, hopefully we could even, yeah, you know, just bring our bring our costs down to a place where mm -hmm. everybody could afford to buy artisan cheese and not just um, those seeking out, you know, a higher end organic market. Yeah, that's the goal to get more people able to have organic products. It is more. It is does cost more because of the steps, but by reducing your cost to make them, being more sustainable it makes the cost easier for your customers and they're going to want to buy more cheese. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, the more you can get, the more you want to come back for anyways. Yeah. And the turnover might become a little faster and smoother. Yeah. So. Exactly. I mean, that conversation is one near and dear to my heart because I do think a lot about access and I definitely don't want to spend my life making a product. I mean, it's a product that I honor and cherish and greatly believe in, but... I don't want to spend my life making a product that is only accessible to a select number of people. Yeah. Um, so I think my interest in, um, you know, really becoming more efficient and reducing waste in my operation has to do with this goal of, of really Definitely trying to get to a price point where, yeah, where, where it is affordable to everyone. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for all your answers. I had a fair amount of questions for you. Yeah. So everyone... Stephanie Angstadt is making her cheeses, and if you like them, ask her more questions on her website. Thank you!